Seeker. Good afternoon, this is the Plug Seeker. Uh, I'm recording today from sunny Surrey. And today's episode, I'm going to talk about Source London and Blue City. Now, these are um, networks that are based in London uh, or Greater London. Now, the first, um, Source London. Um, now, this is something if you're around from if you're a Londoner, you'll be and you're an EV driver, you'll be familiar with. Now, Source London has an interesting history, and in that this was one of the first charging networks that were set up around a city, and this was set up by Travel for London mainly seven kilowatt chargers and three kilowatt chargers. Some of them were type two and some of them were um, three pin plugs. And these were on usually either wall mounted sockets or freestanding machines. Now, the problem with these um, initial phase of Source London chargers were that they were in various different places and that unfortunately when and if and eventually they did a lot of them need maintenance there were problems about whose responsibility it was and also if one wanted to send repairs were they in warranty or were there agreements for service in those particular car parks and things i don't pretend to understand all the details suffice it to say the problem with the first wave of source london charges is that eventually many of them fell into disrepair and disuse and even today there are numerous examples um, and i'll show you a few just here of examples of chargers that are still in disuse sitting abandoned even now from this first wave of chargers so it was a bit of a brave star and this was in the time when there weren't many evs on the road and to be honest, it didn't give good press to EVs and to charging networks because half the time they just didn't work. Uh, they were out of power or malfunctioning. So that was the story at the beginning for Source London. Then that all changed a few years ago when the Source London brand and network were bought up by the Bollor company from France. This company has previously set up electric car sharing network in Paris called Autolib with I think more than about 4,000 cars uh, in that network. There are other networks set up by Bullor in um, Blue Lai in Lyon and there's also one in Bordeaux no. and in Los Angeles I believe. Um, there is also another network in America and I'll put that details up in the edit. So the Bullor network the uh, way it tends to work with their charging networks is that they have city-based networks of chargers and they have city-based networks of pay-as-you-go electric vehicles. So taking the Autolib uh, in Paris, this uh, network has about 4,000 EVs, I believe. And these are, when they're not in use, plugged in to the charging network and so they'll be plugged in sitting next to one of the chargers ready to be used they are then activated pay as you go uh, and i think you have a monthly subscription and you basically activate the car uh, drive it around and you drop it off when you finish at another electric car uh, charger and also parallel to that you can also use the electric charging network for i believe your own evs uh, and you pay to use the charger and the car park space so the Bollor network bought up Source London and now runs the Source London network and has replaced a large number of the old uh, abandoned either working or not working uh, Source London posts with the new white brand new Source London posts which carry a type 2 socket and a type 1 tethered lead and these have been popping up everywhere across Greater London now. Um, some of the old Source London chargers have not been bought up and they either have ended up as orphan chargers which no one can act activate. Some are chargers which can be activated or by um, old cards or some of them are free to use. And there's a lot of them that are just sitting there derelict unfortunately. Um, 
So there's a few of these orphan um, locations. Some of the charges reverted back to the original makers of the charges. So some of the charge master source London posts have been um, basically taken up by the Polar network and become part of their network. So Source London charges that are now still under Source London are the brand new white uh, charges. And if you sign up to Source London, you get an RFID card like this one. And whilst you subscribe, you can then use that card to activate one of the Source London posts and park your EV there. Uh, I believe the maximum parking stay is supposed to be no more than four hours. And the parking uh, is free, but you pay for the charging. And I'll display here the current um, cost of charging your car while it's parked. Now, this is great if you only want to park for four hours or less, because finding a car park space in central London is extremely difficult and or extremely expensive if you use one of the uh, underground uh, car park uh, spaces. So this could be excellent um, as you can drive into London um, and obviously the congestion charge is free if you sign up for I believe uh, it's about £10 a year you can use the, um, you can go to London without paying congestion charge and then you can park for free and you just pay for the electricity you're using which is a hell of a lot cheaper than parking anywhere else. An added advantage is that you can actually also reserve um, one of the car park spaces uh, by the charger using the Source London app. So that's the Source London network as it exists now. They have also started a pay-as-you-go electric car service, very much uh, identical to the Auto Lieb cars in Paris. In London, they have uh, painted these cars red as opposed to the grey cars in Paris and they have been called the Blue City Cars. Now, again, you will have to sign up um, using driver license um, and details, I think proof of ID, online to the Blue City website and it's again a monthly fee which I shall display right here. And once you've done that, you'll be sent one of these blue city membership cards again an rfid card and then this rfid card allows you to use the pay as you go red blue city cars now what's the use of a blue city car well it's very much similar to what you might consider like the boris bikes so basically you'll decide you're going on a trip to london You'll pick up one of the Blue City cars from a charging post where you live or in one of the suburbs and you'll and then you can reserve it I believe very much like you do the Source London car park space. You then activate it with the card and you can also reserve the space you're going to again I think it's again for 45 minutes and then there'll be a charger waiting waiting for you when you get there. And when you get to the other charging spot owned by a Source London Charger again, you will then plug the car in and you'll finish your drive. So this is an alternative to using buses, tubes and overground trains. Um, and you can use up to four people. And um, if you're doing regular journeys, then it may well make sense to do this. And you'll obviously have to look at the price because you pay per use of the car. So, in a nutshell, that is the Source London and the Blue City Networks owned by Bolo. Okay. So, let's assume today I was going on a trip and I wanted to use a Blue City car. So, first thing I'll do is I will find the app on my phone and uh, locate where the nearest charger is that has a car. Now, as you can see from the picture here, the ones in red mean that there are chargers there but no cars or there is one just here you can see in green which means that that one does have a city car now as luck would have it there is one very short distance from where I am now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive over have a look at the city car and we'll see if my app or my card 
can activate it and if so I'll maybe take you for a quick spin around the block and uh, we'll have a look at it and see what it's like here. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so I'm here at the Melbourne car park in, just off of Wallington High Street in Surrey and I am parked right next to a Blue City car. So why don't we take a look at it, shall we? And there it is, there is a Blue City car, as you can see. It's parked right next to the Plug Seekers Leaf. There it is, so it's a compact little uh, five-seater car. Um, not, I believe, a uh, particular brand that's a normal uh, EV that's on sale. I'll try to find out for you and post the exact type of car that the Blue City cars are made of. Uh, I believe they're made in France. I'm just going to go around it. So as you can see, it's a compact little uh, car. Blue City logos all across the side. Okay. And as you can see, it's plugged into one of the standard Source London chargers. I'll show you what it looks like from behind. Oh, look at that wonderful leaf again. Right, okay. And so behind it, you can see, it also says that it serves London Gatwick as well. well that's interesting. So I'm going to give this a try. I'll probably have to also Pay for my one while it's parked here. Okay, bear with me now while I just get that sorted so out. I'm parked to the, the charging point on the other side of where the city car is parked, and I'm just going to use my normal Source London card to park my car here on charge while I have a try on the Blue City car. So I am going to present my Source London card now, and there we go. Good. And I am now going to just plug in my car. And you can either plug in using their Type 1 tethered cable here, or you can plug in as I'm going to do using my own Type 1 to Type 2 cable. As a nice little point there, I see from the sticker that this is powered by SSS Green 100% renewable energy, so that's nice. And a small point, as noted there, you can only park one EV at a time. And so there you are, it's plugged in. And it says on here, cable connector. And as you can see, there you go, the leaf is charging nicely. Okay. So. so now let's have a go with the other charger and see if we can activate and drive away a blue city car. So here goes the card. Enter your pin. Okay. I put my pin in and it's asking me do I hold a driving license? Yes. I'm not under the influence of alcohol, definitely not. And I'm not under the influence of any drugs, medication or substance that can impair my ability and capacity to drive a vehicle safely. Well, I'm happily to say I'm none of those things. So here we go, confirm. Right, and it says, my request is now being processed. Your rental has begun, you may now take your vehicle. Right, so first it says, Unpl tap, unplug, and then plug it again. So having done that, I now come around to the side and I have a little flap here which pull open. And in there you can see the charging cable is plugged in. So I'm gonna unplug that and plug that back 
and I'm going to plug that one back into the socket like so so having a little look there you can see normal type 1 uh, similar to a leaf normal type 1 socket inside this blue city car and this flap so I'm going to close that now so, okay so by placing the card on there that's opened the locks and that's it we are now sitting inside a blue city car so let's have a little look inside what it looks like right so there we go there's a system loading that's the sat nav a very bad and normal basic set of controls not too much exciting there okay you've got a usb normal socket oh look there and it's loading up the screen let's see what it shows blue city logo coming up and maybe we'll come back to that it's loaded and looking around the car it's very basic but it looks clean inside and looking in the back really i would say two seater only back seats um and it does look like if you look down the corner that does look like isofix possibly um metal bars as you can see poking out so that should i imagine allow you to plug in uh various children's car seats i would say you will only get two people in here really at a push you're not going to get more than that there's in fact there's only two seat belts so i would say you're looking at a small four-seater car here okay and as you can see it's got um, my details there which and it says tap screen to continue so now it says a warning okay okay during that it requires your complete attention you can set up destination your comfort and safety service function that connected with a GPS facility. Drive carefully, wish you a safe journey. Continue, yes. And then it's Hello and welcome to your blue car. Ah, it's talking the to next me. time you use a blue car, this information message will be optional. Okay. To start the car, turn the key as normal. I'll let the instructions speak for themselves. Note that the blue car is an automatic vehicle and is driven using only the right foot for accelerating and braking. So like automatic transmission. To start the car, first press your foot down on the brake pedal on the left and put the gear selector into the D position. Okay. You may now use the accelerator. Before starting your journey, you can select your driving mode. Normal driving should be used most often, whilst ice driving is for driving on icy roads and heavy rain. Nothing to do with an internal combustion engine, To facilitate obviously. parking, press the city button for easier steering and a speed that is adapted to manoeuvring the car. To put the car into reverse, first press your foot down on the brake on the left, then put the lever into the R position. You can now reverse by pressing your foot down on the accelerator. Okay, so all Personal straight comfort. Stuff. To open the trunk, pull the lever under the passenger's seat on the right. For your personal comfort, please adjust your seat before you start driving, using the lever located underneath the seat and the knob on the right. Adjust your seat to your preferred driving position using the two controls. To access the rear seats, pull the lever to tip the passenger's seat forward. Navigating. In the interest of safety, please make all adjustments before leaving the parking bay. The touch screen features a GPS on which you can reserve a parking bay at your destination. Safety. Once all your passengers are seated, please do not forget to fasten your seat belts, both in the front and in the rear of the car. In the event of an emergency, please contact assistance by pressing the vehicle's blue button. This service is available 24-7. Please observe speed limits and do not attempt to drive if you have consumed alcohol. Thank you for your attention. Have a safe journey. Okay. Well, I include that. I'll include that on the video as it's uh, very uh, basic information, but at least you know what to expect. And it's useful to know that there is a 24-hour help button and that you can reserve spaces 
use this computer. So I'm just going to continue now and go next. And as you can see, there's a sat nav showing where we are and all the details. And as you can see down here, I'm going to show you there is the key. It's on a little string there, and that goes in the ignition as so. Right, so now, this is the front uh, screen. It says to start, turn the engine to on. I have now put my foot on the brake and turned the key to start, and it's come up with we are ready to go. Right, let's try it. So as I began driving the Blue City car, uh, there are a few initial impressions. Firstly, I have to say that the seat is a little bit stiff and not the most comfortable ride, full stop. I also found that the accelerator and brake were rather sudden. It would seem to be a little overreactive. Of course, whenever you move into driving a different car, there's always a period of getting used to this sort of thing as the settings are usually different. There was good visibility and the regenerative braking felt very similar to the Leaf, to be honest, although not with quite the same degree of acceleration. The visibility was reasonable and the headroom was more than sufficient. So not a car for long journeys, but quite good for short hops around the capital. Incidentally, you're only allowed to drive these within the M25 or on trips from Gatwick Airport to London. As I got to driving it around a little bit though, I have to admit it started to grow on me. I've been driving it now for about 10 minutes and I have to say, I've got used to it. I'm already comfortable with the acceleration and the brakes. I would still say seat is a little bit stiff, but hey, what do you want? It's not a Rolls Royce. I, I think all round this is an impressive little car. But I mean, in, in principle, it's a great idea. And they're not the only people jumping on the bandwagon now. I believe some of the other car hire companies where you borrow and drop off cars, like I believe Zipcar, are also now um, starting to have some EVs in their fleet. I believe they're using e-golfs. Uh, so this could be a, a more common phenomenon around London, and, and why not? I mean, as uh, Bob Llewellyn has said on many occasions, one of the problems with um, ownership of cars is 95% of the time they're sitting there unused uh, and that's wasted so at least with these cars once you finish with your car you go off and do what you're going to do in London you might be in London you go off and do what you're going to do in London you might be in London all day your car that you drove there could be off doing other things during the day and then you pick up a fresh car later um, but uh, so it does mean that these cars can be used and they're not idling all day. At least that's, that's the theory. Um, and there are another advantage. I mean, if you're living in London, you're always in London, you might not need to use them very often. If you hire one of these cars out and you use the monthly membership, which uh, I say the details I'll leave below, you could avoid the necessity of owning a car altogether. Yet, you can still have the option of using them occasionally when you need to. Um, when you use one of these cars, I forgot to mention, but your membership covers um, your insurance for using it as well. And the electricity, obviously, is already used, paid for. So, there are definite advantages. And, of course, this is an EV, so you're not polluting London when you're going around using these. So, this is going to be great for... Um, improving climate change uh, as you notice these are from a zero carbon electricity source and obviously they're going to reduce the air pollution so that's the problems with NOx and particulates and London has got a big problem with air pollution so that has got to be applauded so I'm just heading back now to where I originally picked up the car and I'm gonna just test out returning the car and I'll also take a final look around the car. I'll add a few photographs and we'll have a quick look at the boot space as well. I think I have to say after five, 10 minutes of driving, I'm getting comfortable now with the acceleration and the braking. And uh, as I said, the steering is quite comfortable. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm relatively happy with this car. I think this is all right. Now, 
you've got to park it backwards because you've got to park it with the charging socket next to the charger. So, let's see. Also, when you're reversing, be very careful not to bang into the two metal posts that would stick up just in front of the charger. I think. I'm going to just see if that's okay. So, put the handbrake on and put into neutral, which is on the left. Okay, and make sure the windows are done up. Okay, I'm going to now turn the engine off by turning it and pulling out the key. And the key is out. Right, okay, so to open the boot, and we'll have you just lift up on the passenger side this lever, and I'll show you what the boot looks like inside. Okay, so a very tiny little boot. You probably pick maybe one suitcase for a few bags of shopping. Not a lot else. Now, it doesn't look like you can bring the seats forward. Um, I'm not going to try anymore. I can't see any obvious way of doing it. If anyone who's used one of these cars can let me know if the seats do go forward. Uh, but it doesn't look like they do from here. And there you go again. It shows you the back seats. So as you can see, quite a small space. You can fit two people quite comfortably and it does look like there are uh, fittings, as you can see there, for Isofix car seats. So four people relatively comfortably, but I think that's probably all you're gonna get in this car. So finishing off, we're gonna now turn the car and to do this you swipe your badge on the charge point plug the blue car in and lock the vehicle and that's what it says so let's try and do that blue car card on the post it comes up with these options unplug plug in the car and then tap your card on the car's reading so you unplug the type 1 tethered plug like this okay As your rental is ended thank you for using our service and that seems to be it and by tapping your card on here like that the car locks itself and just testing that the car is now locked so the car is now plugged in again and i'm going to take a couple of photos of the car and then i think we'll head back home Okay, so that went quite well. So all I've got now left to do is to use my Source London card, which is here, to finish the charge on my EV, and then I can take my leaf home. And it now says, to end your charge, please unplug your cable from the charge point. So, there we go. And now your charge is ended. Thank you for using our service. And a notice has come up to say that that charge lasts 47 minutes and cost me £1.69. Okay, time to go home. Okay, I'm back inside my own leaf now. I have to say, the seat is a wee bit more comfortable. But um, yeah, I think that was a really good, successful test of the Blue City Pairs You Go Hire Cars. Good stuff. Right, I think I'm going to now head home. And uh, I think it's time for a nice cup of tea. So this is the Plug Seeker signing off. Happy charging.